These are kind of eye-popping numbers, particularly when you consider that we know hedge funds haven't necessarily been beating the broader market. Mm -hmm. What justifies this type of pay for them? Right, so um, these are the top you know, owners of a lot of these very big hedge funds. They run tens of billions of dollars. They make money on the fees that they can charge and they make money on the returns that they make. Now, these funds made double-digit gains, um, a lot of them on the list. To your point, yes, of the, of the full 15-person um, list, only about a third actually beat the market. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the top five, the billion-dollar club, yeah. only about two of them really beat the S&P. That's Chris Hone's TCI Fund Management mm -hmm. and Chase Coleman's Tiger Global, which is mm -hmm. up 33%. S&P was up about 29% last year. Um, and at the top of the list, top of the list, Chris Hone, uh, one point eight billion dollars is how much uh, yeah. he made last year. Wow. Of course, impressive. these guys are going to say it's more than just one year, right? You're not looking at 2019 on its own. You're mm -hmm. looking at years uh, in, in aggregate. What trends did you notice when it comes to positioning? How these hedge funds were positioned. So it's really interesting because we did see some hedge fund crowding. Mm. Um, we took, an, uh, took a look at where we saw a lot of the overlaps and uh, more than half of the names on the top 15 list counted some big tech companies as some of their biggest contributors to their gains. So Facebook and Alibaba. Um, were pretty popular um, among uh, a big group of them. Um, now, what's interesting is we spoke to somebody who we quoted in the story from Aberdeen who said, well, if that's where the opportunity is, it's where it is. But it can pose some problems um, if they're investing on behalf of their clients who already have exposure to big indices that have these tech stocks in them. So uh, you had Chase Coleman on that list. Mm -hmm. uh, what about some of the other Tiger Cubs? The, you know, the, yes. the Julian Robertson. So we are seeing. Spawn. <laughs> we, we do see a good number of the Tiger Cubs. Yeah. They do t t tend to do very well. Um, we've seen Viking Global on the list, Lone mm -hmm. Pine, um, uh, Gabe Plotkin, who descended from Viking Global. Um, so we see Tiger Cubs and Grand Cubs. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, these, these billionaires or, or you know, th these gentlemen on the list have taken home t t hundreds of thousands, hundreds of millions of dollars. It's all gentlemen on it's the list. It's all gentlemen on the list. Okay. Yes, it is. How much do they charge in fees? Because mm -hmm. we keep talking about 2 and 20 as if that's the industry standard, but so many people remind us constantly it's not 2 and 20. They've actually brought it down a lot. Are these guys charging 2 and 20? So the industry as a whole, you are, you are seeing those fees come down from, say, 2 and 20 to like 1.5 and 17 ish. Mm. Um, but on this list, you know, a lot of these funds are tricky to get into, they're highly coveted. Um, so some, you know, a good number of them do charge around the 20% fees. For long only funds, those fees are lower and it oftentimes is a hurdle that they have to meet. So, I mean, this was a pretty good year for these guys. I mean, how does this stack up to past years that we've seen, is particularly mm -hmm. given how long this bull market's been going on? Yeah, so this is the second year that we've done this study, this analysis. So this year we have five people in the billion dollar club, so mm -hmm. to speak. Last year there were just two, Jim Simons and Ray Dalio. Um, if we look at this year, the top 10 have a, a, a group allocation of about $10 billion um, as a whole. Last year, the top 10 took home about $7 billion. So hmm. we are seeing more money. Granted, S&P was up last year. and 2018, we did see a down year.